First up, please welcome Show Card, presenting our Jeff Weitzman and Armin Ibra uh, Ibrahimi. Thank you. Thank you. We are very excited to introduce Show Card, the digital identity for a mobile world. I'm Armin Ibrahimi, CEO of Show Card. When I was leading the team tackling identity and fraud across all of Yahoo, I realized that there are no good solutions out there. Today, we want to change that. Showcard provides powerful security with that simple convenience that allows you to create a single identity that you can use all the time, anywhere, for any purpose. My co-founder, Jeff Weitzman, will tell you more. As more and more of our activities tie into the cloud, proving your identity has become an everyday task. Financial and healthcare services, streaming video and social media, even access to our smart homes and smart cars all require us to prove we're, well, us. Identity has always been a problem on the internet. Creating a relationship between a real person and their online activities is an enormous and costly challenge. Passwords aren't good enough anymore. Now we have these complicated identity checks. Consumers hate them, they're horrible to deal with on mobile, and they're expensive for businesses which means they aren't used all that often, which sort of defeats the purpose. We need something as simple for consumers to understand and use as showing their driver's license. Something optimized for mobile, something that protects consumer privacy, and something so secure a bank can rely on it. That something is ShowCard. ShowCard is a virtual identity card that you use through a mobile app. It uses strong security techniques like multi-key encryption and hashing, two-factor authentication, out-of-band communication, and data matching. It's built on a public blockchain data layer. So as a company, we are not storing any data or keys that could be compromised. But we've kept all that hidden and made it super simple for consumers to set up and use. Here's what's going on behind the scenes. To seal a show card, we encrypt and hash the data with a set of private keys and store it where it can't be tampered with in the blockchain. Once it's sealed, it can't be altered. A show card can be certified by anyone who needs to know you're you. For example, by your bank. To do that, you send them your show card, and the bank verifies that the data matches the sealed record, proving you have the private keys that created these two identical records. Then the bank creates its own record, tied to your show card, encrypted with its private keys. Now the bank will know it's you any time it needs to. It's kind of the way the bank keeps a signature card on file to check against your signature on checks. You can certify your show card this way with anyone who needs you to show ID. Your bank, your broker, your company, even your gym or data, daycare center. Now that you see how it works, let's see how easy it is to use. If you could switch over to the phones, please. Jeff has already set up and sealed his card, which he only has to do once. The bank that has issued his credit card information has certified it, so he can prove that he's the real account holder every time he tries to use his, uh, his show card. And as you can see, he's got the other certifications there as well. Now let's see how easy it is for the bank to verify his identity when he tries to use his credit card to make a purchase. So Jeff has been shopping and is ready to check out. He presses the purchase button, and right away he has the opportunity to approve his credit card transaction. That gives him peace of mind and the banks a definitive identity check. Now what happens if someone steals his card and tries to use it? Here is the thief that has stolen his credit card and is trying to make a purchase. As you can see, Jeff gets a notification indicating that his credit card is being used. He rejects it, the transaction stops, and no one loses any money. Can we switch back to the uh, slides, please? And that's only one example of how to use ShowCard. Our first clients will be credit and debit card issuing banks that have issued nearly a billion cards and will distribute ShowCard as a mobile-friendly alternative to the existing but very limited authentication process. It can replace or plug into their existing uh, authentication system, increase security and customer satisfaction while cutting costs. Our experiences selling into banks and Fortune 500s will serve us well in this world. Our pricing is truly disruptive. 
existing identity verification services can cost as much as a dollar per transaction. A show card costs less than a penny. That makes it not only possible, but desirable to use it every time, because there's barely a marginal cost and a positive consumer experience. Once we have a critical mass of show cards in use, we'll expand the show card platform across new use cases, like anti-phishing and no password logins, until we've achieved our vision of one easy to use, privacy protecting form of identity for everything you do. We've just given you a taste of Showcard, the one identity system that works the way businesses and consumers need it to for security, privacy, and always on fraud protection. Thank you. Thanks, John. Go ahead. So you, men you mentioned the term critical mass. Um, so what's always interesting about those businesses is that when they work, there's this network effect. Uh, the obvious problem is always how you get there, right? The chicken and egg. Uh, you mentioned large financial institutions, which are notoriously hard to sell to. How do you get this started? So what we feel is that ultimately being able to get distribution through banks and institutions, enterprises, is going to be our best bet because they have the trusted relationship with the consumers where they could actually get consumers to adopt it. Um, one of the things we mentioned, we've actually sold to both banks as well as large enterprises, and we recognize that that cycle is much longer, and it's going to take longer to adopt that. Part of our strategy in terms of what we've developed, the amount of seed money we've raised to be able to proceed, is to let us go through that. But we think that creates the winning strategy. Alternatively, there are other paths that we can go to use Showcard, but we still think, based on the feedback we've had in our conversations and meetings with banks, that this would be a, a, a great path to go to get that distribution. I have a question about this, this notion of the namespace being tied to security. So my instinct is that uh, you get a social security card by law, you get a green card by law, but you only get a passport when you need to travel. You only get a driver's license when you need to drive. And so what's the pain point that can serve as the motivating factor for the user to onboard here? Well, that's one of the reasons that we are starting with uh, an area where there's a huge amount of losses. So there's a financial incentive for the banks to help distribute this to their consumers. They're currently using a system called 3D Secure, which hasn't been adopted that widely because it's a really bad consumer experience. But there's a lot of money at stake. And in fact, with the amount of online shopping where there's card not present transactions taking place, which have a very high rate of fraud and it's increasing, there's a liability shift between the acquiring bank and the issuing bank. So there's actually a real financial driver there that will help the banks introduce this to consumers. And then we intend to expand the use cases so consumers love having their ID on their wallet they can use for anything that they would use other ID for. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so my background has been primarily in uh, software technology. I've got my degrees in computer science. Uh, I worked at Yahoo from 1998 to 2008. I was the senior vice president for platform engineering, uh, which included identity and fraud at Yahoo. Uh, after that, I was uh, at Bysight, a startup that we actually sold to AOL in 2012. And in both of those experiences, I worked with uh, Jeff. After Jeff left Yahoo, he was actually uh, president and CEO of Coupon. I'll let him talk a little bit more about himself. And after Yahoo, I, I went and was president and CEO of Coupons.com, which in addition to being a savings site, is really a financial transaction processing company. How many people you are now? How many people? Two. Two. Is two. the two of us at this point. So you are uh, just beginning. We've just begun. And where do you want to get if everything is fine? I, I'm sorry, if you could repeat that, please. What is your aspiration? Our aspiration in terms of the business. What, what we aspire to do with this business is that we want to be able to replace um, what people ultimately have in the wallet with, a, with an identification card, not just your driver's license, but identification card to be mobile. Similar to what Apple Pay has done with the credit card, where they're replacing the credit cards you would have in your wallet being online. Have you thought about starting with a particular demographic for whom this might be a more urgent pain point, say uh, elders or somebody who has less documentation than they would otherwise need? That's a great question. We actually think that by going through the financial industry, while credit card authentication is where the real losses are within the financial institutions, there are other use cases like retirement fund account management and things like that, which are critical for 
older citizens to be able to really understand how their security is working. And we've designed this and hopefully we showed that while we're using really strong things like two-factor authentication, we've hidden it all and made it really simple so that someone can understand I keep my ID and when I need to prove it's me, I just touch this thing and my bank knows it's me. So it's an excellent question. I find the world of uh, blockchain applications to be fascinating. Do you feel that the uh, infrastructure is mature enough that for something as mission critical as security, you can build a whole system on it at this stage? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think a lot of times people mistaken the applications that sit on top of blockchain with the infrastructure of blockchain. The blockchain itself is an incredible infrastructure. Uh, there are questions about Bitcoin, its viability, its growth, but that's an application on top of it. The blockchain itself, uh, the distributed database that ultimately exists, the encryption, uh, all of that security that's embedded within that is, uh, has actually uh, been quite mature, very well developed, and that's what we're really using with that, not the applications that are on top of it. And are banks convinced of this? Well, when we talk to banks, if we mention Bitcoin, that's one of the things that oftentimes financial institutions want to stay away from, they're not sure about, and there's learning about that. We don't use Bitcoin, we use the blockchain. Bitcoin is one instance of the blockchain, but we really focus on the technology, and we don't use it just to say we use blockchain. Our application literally uses it so that we can keep all the PII on the phone, on the mobile device that belongs to the user, and ultimately take ourselves out of being a trusted party that has to keep anything. So we encrypt and put everything on the blockchain. Obviously, there may be some education that needs to happen in that, but in the conversations we've had, when we mention blockchain, that the fear of Bitcoin goes away because we don't actually touch Bitcoin. Right. Okay. Um, uh, it's just uh, quickly, um, who are your competitors and would you consider Apple Pay a competitor? Should they expand? You know, they're used from credit cards to other forms of identification. Well, we consider most of our competitors are existing identity verification systems. Um, they tend, to, there's a, I know we're low on time, so there's a variety of things that, that we think we have superior to them. In terms of Apple Pay, um, Apple and Google both have the potential to be competitors. We think that we're better positioned to do something that leverages their platform rather than getting into the kind of details that we are on identity. We are out of time. That was a great quick answer. Uh, thank you to Showcard. Great job. Thank you. Thank you.